Hi everyone and welcome to my December anime manga update video. It's a lot. It's I know I say that every month, but this this time I really mean it. There's so much here. There's absolute stacks of manga. There's a literal stack of anime as well. It's been a big month. I've been getting mail almost every day that we've had mail service deli delivery services available. Um, stuff from holiday sales, stuff from previous months that have just reached me, um, some stuff from Christmas money that I was gifted, uh, nothing actually like straight up presents, uh, my family doesn't tend to do that, but, um, the money that I got was spent on this sort of stuff, <laughs> um, and just also money from working. It's the busiest time of the year and therefore uh, just wage gets calculated a little higher um, for overtime and that sort of stuff. So anyway, there's a lot here. There's an absolute huge amount. I'm really not planning on getting anything near as this much for a long time after this. I'm pretty sure the next couple months are going to be quite slim uh, compared to the last couple months especially but um anyway aside from that I hope everyone had a wonderful uh Christmas or end of year holiday fest or festivities that they do um it was it was a nice one uh for me here it was a bit hot but otherwise okay and um you may notice that I'm in a completely different spot to where uh, normally I film and that is because where I normally film is is just overrun with stuff. Instead of presents my family actually renovates the room of the house and because that room is the guest room or the spare room we put all the stuff in there until we're ready to move everything back. Um, so where I normally <laughs> film is just completely overrun with stuff. So if there's different lighting and diff more background noise and stuff, I apologize. That's just how it's worked out. Um, I hope I wanted to have the renovated room done in time for this video, but that just hasn't happened. So I'm sure you can all handle being in a different spot just for this month. Um, and I'll stop babbling and talking and get on to what I actually got. <laughs> um, so first off, I'll do the manga. There's a lot. Like I said, I warn you. And I'm pretty sure I have at least one release from every manga publisher in the United States. Aside from maybe Fantagraphics and One Piece books. But I don't really count them. Just because One Piece books doesn't have that much printed anyway. Uh, Founder Graphics does, but they're really slowing down their releases, unfortunately. And Wandering Sun is on hiatus. I'm so sad. Um, but anyway, uh, first up is the Viz stuff, all from the same series. And that is Volume 1, 2, and 3 of Tokyo Ghoul. Read them all. Um, I've seen the show, and I have without reading these first. The show's alright, it's good. The manga is, I think everyone would agree, better, but at the, this point it's still in stuff that was in the anime, so I don't know um, when that will change or uh, differ from what we got in the show. I, I didn't mind the show, I thought it was fairly interesting, but um, yeah, I'm happy to read the manga. And then next is Kodansha releases. Um, three here, volume nine of Noragami, uh, the, which of the second season just finished, which is pretty much this and part of the next volume, I believe. Oh, I'm so excited. I just, uh, the, I just finished watching the show last night and it was such a twist and such a revelation. So I'm really excited to read the next volume even though some of it is already stuff that I've seen in the show. <sighs> but Noragami's fantastic series. If you're not reading it, you should really try it. Try the show, try the manga, whichever. They're both very, very good. 
Uh, next is volume two of Kiss Him Not Me by Junko. Introducing a new character in this one. Um, very cute, uh, kind of shoujo esque, uh, or shoujo series with uh, Junko's typical sense of humor. I like it. It's I've said this about the last volume as well. It has the gimmick, which I'm not a huge fan of in in, in manga in general, but it's played. Uh, it's not played straight here. It's kind of played for laughs, and it's a bit ridiculous. It's not taking itself too seriously, so I can take it more seriously, or I can. It doesn't uh, annoy me as much as it would otherwise. Um, but yeah, uh, I think only three or four chapters in this. Yeah, four chapters in this. They're, you're, they're not that thick of volumes, but they're a real joy to read, or at least I think. And next is Attack on Titan, volume 16. Um, I do have 17 coming, but because of, you know, end of year, Christmas postage and everything, it's slowed way down. This was the only one I needed, um... To fill the gap between this and 17. Uh, yeah. I uh, just... It, well, I've read it. I read it on the Crunchyroll manga app. And I reread it again when I got the book. It's good. It's finally answering some questions. And uh, you can tell it's kind of wrapping up finally. <laughs> Attack on Titan's good. But um, it does... I think it has a certain shelf life for its story. You can't stretch it out forever. So I'm glad that there is an end in sight. Um, and next is all Yen Press stuff. There's quite a few here, actually. Uh, I'll start with the light novel, which is volume 16 of Spice and Wolf, which is The Coin of the Sun, part 2. Uh, yep, I haven't read it yet, but really eager to. And it's a very thick volume. I'm so excited. And then this is the penultimate one, so the next one is just... Uh, finishing up the story or epilogue. I don't know. I haven't read this one, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so excited to, to read this. And I'm really sad that one of my favourite light novel series is finally coming to a close. Next is uh, the first volume of a new series uh, of the red, the light, and the Ayakashi, which in Japanese is just called Aka Aka. Uh, based off of a visual novel by Hucker Works, um, the manga adaptation is really interesting. There's, we don't really know very much. It kind of reminds me, people have, have likened it to Natsume's Book of Friends, which is why I picked it up in the first place. And it does have that feeling, but I feel like if it's, if it was Natsume's Book of Friends and they met the kind, not the ultra-violent side, but the kind of mystery side of um, Higurashi when they cry. I, I really got a sense of that, like, oh, the spirited away stuff, and like the weird festival, and, and spirits coming down from the hill mountains, and you know, integrating with human society. It's interesting. I'm I'm excited to read more, and because it is a visual novel adaptation, I think the manga has a lot of plot to work with. The art is good, um, but yeah, really interested to see where it goes. And then next is a one shot, or a, yeah, one volume complete series, and that is Olympus by Aki. It's very thick, it's an omnibus of the two volumes. Interesting. Um, I hadn't really read anything like it. It's set sort of with ancient Greek gods and stuff, like Zeus and Apollo and, and Hades and that sort of thing. I'm very... it was interesting reading the history at the back. I, I knew a lot of it because my... <laughs> long story short, my sister is very into Greek myths. But um, it was interesting. It's uh, it doesn't follow the mythology absolutely strictly. Um, I think they just uh, Aki just took the characters and played around with the setting and the plot, which is good. I think it's good that it wasn't just like a one for one 
Shapes, but it's the first thing from Arceus that I read. The plot is a bit all over the place, but you can see there's it's trying to have something substantial there. It's much more a thinking series than like much happening. That sounds kind of that almost sounds bad, but it's not. Um, but the other uh, series which I read of Arceus is the same, so I, I feel it's just her writing style. But yeah, Olympus. It's interesting. It's definitely if you're interested in Greek myths and stuff. You might want to ch check it out. It's not hugely expensive or anything. And speaking of Aki, the act the other, her other ink published English work is The Angel of El Hamburg. This is actually a hardcover release. It's absolutely beautiful. This one has a bit more of a solid storyline than Olympos. And the art's developed a little bit differently as well. It almost gives me a Kaoru Mori-esque feel. Or, um... Oh, Su... Sukano? Oh, I can't remember her name. The woman who writes um, After School Charisma. That, that sort of style of artwork. It's interesting. It's about a, like, guy who can see angels and demons and stuff and, and sort of how power corrupts and jealousy corrupts. It's good, and it's it's very thin for a hardcover, but I think it, it does have more of a storyline to it than um, Olympos, but still very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I liked it. And then finally for the Empress stuff, there it's two Kaoru Mori uh, books. First one being Kaoru Mori Anything and Something, which is her like one-shot collection. Uh, I love it. This is <laughs> it's so self-indulgent. You can see she had a lot of fun. There's a lot of maids, lots of bunny girls, lots of very attractive women, glasses, a Victorian England. She just she had a lot of fun. It's a really interesting compilation of different settings and storylines. I really liked it as a fan. It was just just icing on the top of the cake of all the other Mori stuff we've been getting recently. And the fact that it's hardcover, it's got the slip uh, or disc cover like all of her currently printing works do. It's just a fantastic addition to the Mori collection. And then finally from Yen is the third volume of Emma. Uh, so over halfway through the series now, the dust cover on this one is absolutely beautiful. I love that inside cover. I haven't got it on that inside cover because I don't want to fold these things too much. But oh, Emma is really an interesting look into the social structure of the Victorian era. If you're a fan of like period pieces, you'd probably enjoy this. It's very much um, indulgent of that time frame and it's incredibly researched. I mean you're not gonna get um, something completely out of place with it. She <laughs> more is completely obsessed with Victorian England and you can really see that in her writing in how she actually constructs her backgrounds and plots and everything. It's very... Every detail is really perfect. Um, really looking forward to the last two volumes. Um, yeah, just really excited. Next is the one volume from Seven Seas I got, which is The Ancient Marguses, 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 uh, Bride, Volume 3. Uh, yep, still still enjoy this one. I actually like this volume more so than some of the pre or the last two, which is good because you want to build on your plotline. Um, still not you know completely smitten with it, but it's very interesting, and I, I mean, <laughs> I do like it, so I will keep buying it. I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm not hugely sold on the romance between these two. It's not my thing. But all the magic and the kind of interesting world they live in, I'm I am interested in. So hopefully, hopefully that's enough to keep me, you know, really into it. 
Next is, I'll do it now. Oh, I should do this first. Uh, next is Planetess Volume 1 of the Omnibus, Omnibi by Dark Horse. This is a really thick volume. If you're a fan of Makoto Yukimura's other work, Vinland Saga, I definitely recommend you pick up Planetess. I'm a fan of the anime anyway, so I would have gotten it otherwise, but Yukimura really knows what he wants to do with a story, what kind of message he wants to have, and this is very much so in that style. This is a beautiful release as well. It has all the colour pages, the paper quality is fantastic, the print quality, and I mean Yukimura's plot and our story and art and everything is just fantastic so definitely recommend this one it's only going to be two omnibus long overall and you're getting a lot for your money it's a very heavy book much more so than any of, of my other omnibi like even the umineko ones which are like this thick not nearly as heavy as this you can really feel the weight of the paper in this one. So if you're want if you're kind of on the fence about buying it, definitely pick it up because it is so so worth it. Uh, next is Vertical and that it, it's four volumes from the same series. And it's volume six, volume seven, Volume 8 and Volume 9 of What Did You Eat Yesterday. So I'm caught up. I know Volume 10 is coming in like three months or something. So I'm not going to be caught up you know, forever. But finally, this is one of my... One of the... One of my favourite Fumi Yoshinaga series. I say that all her series are my favourite series. Um, but this these last couple of volumes have been really phenomenal both with the recipes and um, developing the actual main characters. Um, it's really interesting. We've had uh, New Year's, we've had birthdays, we've had people having getting married and having babies and, you know, all, all so many. It's really very, very down-to-earth, very realistic. It's, it's life. It's absolutely life. And I've heard that people aren't really a fan of how Yoshinaga has written her gay characters in this um, because of like uh, Shiro, this this main character isn't you know out at work his work his um, uh, not employees <laughs> his work associates don't know he's gay and all that but I think that's looking at it at very much an American or Western centric perspective. Um, it's not, I don't think people understand the kind of stigma that gay people still have in Japan. So it, it, I don't think Yoshinaga is making a political statement or anything with her work. It's just people and their choices they make and what they have to do to live a normal stress-free life. And Honestly, for most people, they don't care about your your sexuality, your orientation. People who do care aren't worth telling really that much, aside from you know close friends and family. But I don't feel like it has to be something you tell the whole world, whether you're gay or straight or bisexual or whatever else. That's your personal business. And <laughs> but um, in saying that, I I do think that the way Yoshinaga has written it, you, you can tell it's just a personal choice of the character. It, it's not saying anything about Japanese society as a whole. It's not saying anything about the gay movement in Japan at all. She doesn't write stories, or she doesn't write this series with that kind of thing in mind. It's just characters living their lives, and it's literally that. It's probably the most true-to-life, slice-of-life series there is. It's not, you know, cute happenings occurring with, with a, a soothing background tune. These are people who are in a relationship, who fight, who get along, who have a meal together every day. They work, they're stressed out, they celebrate birthdays together. It's... It's what you do 
when you live. It's literally a slice of life. And that's honestly why I think Yoshinaga does it so well. Because everybody, no matter what race you are, how old you are, what your sexual orientation is, you can relate to some extent. Everyone has that annoying family member or that the friend of your partner who is just annoys you so much or makes you jealous or you know sh work is stressing you out or there's certain, some drama going on <laughs> with something. People can relate to that and I think Yoshinaga frames it so well because even no matter what's going on in their lives, these two characters always come back and and eat together and have that moment with each other and that's you can tell how much um, kind of care she puts into the plot as well as her love of food go that goes into this but I'm gonna stop talking about this because <laughs> I, I, I get I talk a lot about Yoshinaga stuff and I'm sure you guys all know that and so because of that I'm gonna go quickly over these their um, Tokyo Pop titles from their BL um, line back when Tokyo Pop was still a thing called Blue uh, all, these are all second hand so they're in pretty bad shape and two of them I'm actually going to rep or have replaced they're not here yet um, but the the latest Right Stuff Christmas sale had a lot of her manga for very very cheap so I decided to get new copies for a lot cheaper and just you know I don't really it wasn't too much money to get them originally anyway, so I don't really feel too bad, but the ones I am going to replace are volumes 1 and 2 of Gerald and Jacques, a BL title, obviously, from the blue imprint, like I mentioned. Yoshinaga is one of her first BL titles, I believe. It's not, I think Moon of Sandals was her first, but this is very interesting. It's much less about well, it, it's about the relationship, but it's very much focusing on the French Revolution. So that's also what I like about her BL. There's more than just uh, two guys falling in love and r romancing and everything else. There is actually a larger world going on. But yeah, Gerald and Jacques. Uh, read it. Very, very interesting, uh, especially for BL title. And the one that I am not going to replace uh, is, it's a little bit more beat up than those, or it's kind of beat up the same amount, is Truly Kindly. Uh, it's a one volume kind of companion to another volume, which is um, Lovers in the Night, uh, which is one that should be coming second hand to me and also I bought <laughs> I don't know there's so much stuff coming to me in the next couple months so who knows um yeah it's this is more a collection of short stories than rather than one continuous story um interesting very interesting uh yeah so that's all of my Fumi Yoshinaga stuff I got this month so now I really just need a couple of her BL works and then uh, Garden of Dreams or Garden Dreamer or whatever, whatever that what that one one shot is, and then I'm completely caught up. I have all of her works released in English until you know, Volume Ten of What Did You Eat Yesterday and Volume Twelve of All Could Come Out. <laughs> but you know, I'm not going to complain. And finally, my last uh, title, my last manga I got is another BL title from June. A digital manga publishing's imp or line, BL line, and it's called Yana Does. Even so, I will love you tenderly. Very good. I liked this one a lot. Um, not nearly as explicit as some of Yana Does' other work, but oh, oh, the emotions. It, you, you can real, you really feel the desperation and the sadness of unrequited love in this one. It's really good. Um, I haven't read the kind of original story that this is a spin-off of, which is uh, No Touching at All, but um, just as a plug for any BL fans out there who are trying to get some of June's more hard-to-find titles, 
um, their current Kickstarter, which is Sakura's, or, or trying to publish Sakura's for like four of her bar titles. That doesn't really interest me that much, but as an add-on, you can get uh, any of their currently in print series um, from any of their authors for ten dollars or ten to twelve dollars, depending on where you are, whether you're in the U.S. or otherwise. Um, and you can get, uh, you know, nine various um, out of print titles, and they're actually going to reprint them. Uh, and there's no limit on that, so you can buy whatever you want. There's not; it's not going to run out for the first two hundred people or whatever. If you say you want a copy, they're going to print you a copy. So if you do want to find a copy of uh, No Touching at All, the uh, Volume One of Twittering Birds Never Fly, uh, both of those are on that list. There's also the first volume of uh, Does the Flower Blossom and uh, Jonko's Mr. Minimart which I did actually mention to someone on uh, through messaging system here on YouTube. Uh, and there's Private Teacher, I think the first three volumes. There's ZE or ZE, volume six. Uh, and a bunch of stuff I don't really know personally, but if you're a fan of Yonada and you're trying to look for those couple of volumes that you don't have, or if you wanted to get Mr. Minimart and just never found a copy because it went out of print so quickly, jump onto that um Kickstarter because it's already funded and there's it's not like a minimum sort of thing where you, we have to hit a certain amount of money to print those they'll be done because we where it's funded so that money will go to that printing it's done and I mean if you're a fan of Sakura and her work then there's that option as well you can get four of her different uh, titles so it's it's kind of exciting to be able to get out of print stuff reprinted. Also, just as another note, um, Twittering Birds Never Fly Volume 1 is a new translation, so it'll be better than the current copy out there. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to stop talking about BL and all of that, and uh, quickly just go to art books. There's three here. Um, first is... Zaki, the Tokyo Ghoul art book by Ishida. Very small. It's the same size as a Japanese volume of manga. You can tell it's um, smaller than the Western sizes by a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. And then so that's that was good. I got that the other day. Little Witch Academia, The Enchanted Parade. This is the art book from the Kickstarter, um, which they shipped out separately from their actual their other awards. So yeah, excited to have gotten that. And finally, um, this isn't really related to any one series or anything, but it's actually a com or kind of like an anthology art book. It's called Boy Meets Graph, and it has a bunch of different artists, female artists generally, um, who work on Otome games and uh, BL stuff, all that. And it's their male, all the artwork it has a male focus. So <laughs> if you're a fangirl and are, are interested in female illustrators, or anything like that. This is a very, it's a very thick book. It's got a whole range of um, artists here, and it has English translation for everything. Um, I'll just go here. There's not. It has all their contact information as well as the notes and background in English as well as their name. So you know. You you do actually you are actually able to read it. Also, interestingly enough, this here is Haka Works, who I mentioned before about um, the red, the light, and the Ayakashi. Uh, there, right there, main character. And so you do. They're all people who are in the industry who work as professional illustrators and mangaka and everything else. It's it's a very interesting little uh, book and I was surprised to see it uh, when I saw it on Amazon Japan. Anyway, 
It's half hour already and I haven't even started on anime or anything else. So again, apologies for the very, 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 very long video this month. So first up is, I'm actually, yeah I'll do this. This is uh, some things I got from the Right Stuff sale. And that is season 3 and 4 of Yu Hawk Show. I uh, don't have one or two, but I will get them, you know, sometime. I'm not in any huge rush, but I love Yu Hawk Show, and I've heard the Blu-ray is amazing for this series, so really excited to get that. And obviously, right stuff sale. It was cheap, not really that cheap for us international um, buyers, but it, overall, it was cheaper than getting it from Amazon and all that. Uh, next is Hozuki's Cool Headedness, another from the sale, and I really liked this show. It was one of the funnier uh, shows from 2013, 2014, whenever it came out. Uh, it's a good series, it's a complete collection, and uh, I think we have a DVD release of this series here, but not a Blu-ray release, which is always a shame. We don't really necessarily get a Blu-ray release here in Australia, and speaking of... Uh, part 2 of Haikyuu, which, again, was a, something I got from the sale. Um, yep, I love Haikyuu. I just finished watching the, well, the current season, with the uh, where it's up to. <sighs> Haikyuu is one of my favourite sports series. It really is. It's Production IG has done a fantastic job on it. Even the soundtrack. Just if just the soundtrack is phenomenal on its own, but the animation quality, the voice acting quality, just, you can tell how much love has gone into this, even aside from plot and everything else. But in saying that, the plot and the actual sports occurring in Haikyuu is it's right on point. It's not like Kuroko where you're like, that would never happen. Haikyuu is within the realms of possibility. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so Haikyuu, part two. And this I actually got from eBay, which, from the eBay, the deep discount eBay store. And that's Space Brothers Part 3. I've already got Part 1 and 2, so Part 3 is good. And I actually have something else coming from them. So hopefully next month it'll be here. Space Brothers is phenomenal, just by the way. Check it out on Crunchyroll. Uh, it's very different. Um, it's really good. If you're a fan of Planetas, try Space Brothers, because it is within the same kind of vein of realistic space travel. It's not really sci-fi or anything like that. <sighs> anyway, um, next is something I got from, or with Christmas money, and that is Ghost in the Shell and Ghost in the Shell Innocence. Um, I had the DVD version of this, so I'm just upgrading or updating or whatever else to um, Blu-ray. Can't wait to watch this movie in Blu-ray. Well, can't wait to watch either of them in Blu-ray, really. Now all I need is um, the little OVA on Blu-ray. Um, Solid State Society. Is that what it is? Yes, I, I believe so. <laughs> um, next is a box set, a limited edition box set from uh, Australian distributor here. It's their first limited edition release and that is Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works Part 1. I think Hanabi did a really good job on this one. Um, it's four discs in four cases and it has a book in there as well but I'm not going to take that out. Disc 1, Disc 2, Disc 3 and Disc 4. There's only a thousand printed, something like that. And uh, they all come with like number of art cards. This is a poster. I'm not a huge fan of posters, and I'm just gonna keep it in there, so no stress. And it's all folded up and stuff. I, I never really see the appeal of that. This is actually the numbered card. I got number 99 out of a thousand, so <laughs> just barely in the the first 100. But yeah, that was exciting to see. And then. Well, disc 3 it has it's like stickers, not anything I'm too interested in. And volume 4 doesn't have anything else, uh, any like little extra 
in it. It just has the disc. But it's a beautiful release, and I really applaud uh, Hanabi for doing such a good job on it. Although, I, for some reason, I was expecting it to be matte. It's really glossy. So, I was surprised when I actually got it and unboxed it and everything. Uh, and then finally, are all things I got, f the final things I got from the Madman sale, which is another shiner distributor here. Um, all of this came to $30, and the most expensive thing was a movie, so that's saying something. Um, so that expensive movie was Giovanni's Island. A uh, new film I really had wanted to watch for a long time, so I'm glad I was able to get it. And $15 for a film, that's how much I got this for, $15 for a movie, especially an anime movie, on Blu-ray is amazing. Generally, Blu-ray movies here cost, even like the mainstream Hollywood movies, cost like $35, $40 on Blu-ray. So I was, I'm saving a lot of money, like quite a lot of money, so yeah, had to had to get that when I saw it. And then, so it makes sense that the rest of the stuff is the other half of the $30. Um, which there is Gothic Collection 1 and Collection 2. Uh, these were $5 each. I waited a long time for Gothic to be re-licensed in America. I know Bandai had it, and then Bandai went out of business. And so I waited for Funimation or Santa or someone to pick it up and release it. But it's been absolute, like, it's been years and years and years and years. So I thought, I'm just going to buy the DVDs. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Um, even though this show, I'm not... Like, I don't really mind whether, usually whether shows have du dubs or not, but this show would really benefit from a dub, I think. Uh, just from, with the setting and everything. But Gothic is really good. I enjoyed it. It's a bone show. And so I'm surprised it hasn't been re-licensed <coughs> in America. Pardon me. And finally, another $5 item, and that is the second season of Gunsinger Girl. Um, El Teatrino. Um, and I just keep it in this box with my other Gunslinger Girl uh, releases, so that's the complete series now. I had the American release, but they were just two little thin packs, and this is the American box set for the first season. Um, LTA or Gunslinger Girl, I, I'm a bit of a mixed bag on, because I like the animation of the first season and parts of the story. Not a fan of Henrietta, so it wasn't didn't really care all that much about her in the first season. The second season, which focuses much more on Triana and Angelica and all that, is much more interesting to me, even though the animation took a huge nosedive because they did change studios. And the OVAs are, are really just, you don't need to watch them at all. It doesn't really add anything. But anyway, yes, got the whole season for $5. Was very, very happy. Um, as, or there's just a couple little things that I got in addition to all that. Um, the new uh, music from the new free film, which is Aching Horns by Old Codex, uh, which is the theme song of the film, and then Perfect Blue uh, Scenes, which is the movie soundtrack. Haven't seen the film, obviously, um, but really excited to. I, I don't know, I'm just such a sucker for free things. And continuing on from that thought, uh, I, I got two of my little birthday uh, free rubber strap this month. I got Ray and Nishori. I haven't done anything with them yet because that room's been totally unusable for like a week and a half. So. <laughs> Yes, all I need now is Rin, uh, which he's ordered and everything, but he doesn't come out until January because his birthday is in February, so. So finally, it's 40 minutes and I'm finally on to the, the figures. Hopefully uh, this won't take too long because there's quite a few of these as well. I'm just going to quickly show you this. I can't, I don't actually have the figures because they're my glass 
case where I normally keep them and I can't get to them at the moment because of all the stuff in there. So first what I got was both of these, um, Yachi and Kyoko from the Haikyuu DX line. They're so cute. They're, are, they are really worth the money if you can find them. They're, the pink quality is great. Just everything. Sculpt. And they're totally adorable. I love the manager. It's so rare that you get figures of the manager, the female characters in sports series. So I just, I, oh, I had to get them. No boxes or anything else for any of these ones. They're all in storage already. But uh, I got the prize figure of Makoto, the little sailor outfit, and Rin I just got yesterday. So that's my three, my trio of the little young sailor suit free boys there. They're adorable. And I mean, for prize figures, their paint is amazing, the sculpt is great. Um, and I can't wait to put them alongside Haru, but I can't get to where Haru is, so <laughs> they're just gonna have to hang out alone. Or hang out with each other. Her will hang out alone. Um, and then, continuing on from prize figures, I have two of uh, Mega House's new range, the palm mate things. They're like teeny tiny little one twelfths. And that is Miyuki and Saomura from Ace of Diamonds. I like Ace of Diamond, but I'm not a huge, like, I don't like it enough to spend a huge amount of money on the scales. These were very expensive for what they are, and aside from the Kominato brothers, who I've already got ordered, and who are some of my favourite characters, um, I really have to decide, because there was a lot of um, production qualities with Miyuki, but I think it has really fixed itself since. I think Samura turned out quite good and from what I've heard Haruichi and his brother Ryosuke have really gotten a lot better than the initial quality that was with Miyuki. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm, I'll probably end up getting it because I am weak-willed <laughs> in that regard. Um, and then, okay, I have one scale figure which is the Rin 17th Love Live. Um, she's adorable. I know a lot of people are not a fan of her outfit and the, the pants and oh, oh yellow and green, you know, whatever. She's adorable. I just so cute. I'm not even a fan of Rin the character, but I love the scale of her. I think it worked out or turned out really well. Um, and then Nendroids. Uh, I've got three. You can see here first is whoop, sorry about that awful noise. Uh, Black Rock Shooter which obviously is a Miku, so yeah, I got this second hand from a local collector for quite cheap, I was very happy that I was able to get her, and from the same person, uh, they organized the group order for my city's, or my city's group order for the next Nandroid, which is the Harvest Moon Miku, who is absolutely gorgeous. Just, just so, she's so lovely. Um, so, because I had a group order with that same girl, I decided to buy this, because this was in her store, or her, anyway, so, I got the two of them together, and then finally, my last Nendroid, which is also a Miku, which actually kind of puts an end to my Miku collecting, because it's really... Like the last one I wanted. We'll we'll see about the new uh, winter one, but I don't know whether or not that will turn out. I'm sure a lot of you already know what it is, but it is the 2013 Snow Miku, who is pretty much the the holy grail of Miku Nendoroids. Everybody loves this figure. It's really hard to find. I got it secondhand on Amiyami. She was unopened. It's she's gorgeous. Very expensive, but totally worth it. Um yeah, I've wanted this Miku for a long time. Kind of accepted my fate that I never would get her. And now I I found her and I got her. 
and she's just so adorable. She has a little hood and everything else, but I decided to put her in her little sake drinking cup. She's so cute. I love her hair. I love these little squiggles. Anyway, <laughs> and her umbrella and everything. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, so this has been a 45 minute video. Very, very long. I'm so sorry. But that's everything I got in December. Oh my god, there's so much. Um, I don't think I will ever get that much stuff again. I have Mongo on order, but that's from Christmas money and stuff. And I mainly did pre-order stuff, so I will have things in the future to show you guys, because I'm not sure about how uh, much regular... Because I'm kind of finished for the working year until March, so I'm not going to have as much expendable cash. So my next... As I said, my next couple months will not be nearly as extravagant as this. Uh, it'll be very, very small, really. Um, but, yes. So. So, there's a... Thank you for watching all of that, if you did. Um, I know I got kind of sidetracked and babbled on a lot at some points there. But, um, I hope you... <laughs> I hope that's okay, Other, like, otherwise, because I'm not going to edit this, I'm sorry, I'm very lazy. <laughs> um, but, thank you for watching, I got a huge amount of stuff. Next month I'll be back where I normally am, filming, but with a lot less stuff, I hope and believe. Um, I've kind of put a dent in a lot of my backlog both for figures and anime and everything, so I think purchases will be slowing down. I say that. it, it They'll never slow down. Oh, no, I actually am hoping to cut back on spending next year, but we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so yes, I hope everyone had a fantastic end of year Christmas or holiday or whatever, however 